Minders going man to man, and that's a travel, unforced turnover there from Tana Hickey. Now with a game at this intensity level, you hate to have just kind of careless turnovers like that, Matt. Yeah, Geneva's got two of them so far, and uh, you know they need to cut that down if they're gonna stay with Minders here tonight. Geneva goes back to that 1-3-1. Sweeney plays the back, Terrell Johnson on the front, and there's a deflection from Junior Sims. Leads to a run out the other way. Off Donahue. balance, 15 footer was no good from Donahue. The rebound comes down to Luke Ruddy. Here comes Minders looking to run the floor. Ruddy had three guys on him, finally gets rid of it. Here's a three off the mark from Pasolacqua, rimmed out. Brandon's really worked on his outside shots. It's kind of been one of his, uh, not problem areas, but he hasn't been a steady three point shooter his whole career, and he seems to be shooting the ball a little bit better this year. Geneva basketball. Ricky went for the steal but couldn't get it, and that leaves an open Sweeney for three. No good. Offensive rebound put back. Can't find the mark, and the rebound comes down to Johnson. Uh, to uh, Miller, rather. Pass a lock will pull up. That's short, and the rebound to Terrell Johnson. Johnson, the leading rebounder on this Geneva team. Matt, seven boards per game in the early going. Yeah, he's a, he's a good athlete. He, he can play above the rim. Uh, he kind of struggled with Ruddy last year. Ruddy had a nice game inside against him, and uh, looks like Junior Sims is also going to be matched up with Ruddy tonight. So. Hickey on the wing goes to Sims. Now they reversal back, reverse it back over for Johnson. Boy, a good seal inside for Hickey, but he bobbled it and ultimately loses the basketball. Two on one the other way for Minders. Pasolacqua uses the glass. Nice play by Brand there, kind of hung in the air, let the defender go by and then banked it home. Boy, that's a big swing there. Hickey seals the defender, and he's laying that in. Instead, it's a turnover and a two-on-one the other way, and Minders converts. 9-5 lead for Minders. We're midway through the first quarter. Another and, Geneva turnover. And Johnson picked up his dribble, tried to get it back to Donahue, and goes out of bounds. And we're going to have a timeout early on called by the Geneva Panthers with Minders opening up a 9-5 lead. And... Gives us a chance to thank our fine sponsors. First of all, Madej, Miris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. If you suffered a serious injury or accident and want personal professional attention, call the Finger Lakes Personal, personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911 for a free, no-obligation phone consultation serving the Finger Lakes and surrounding areas since 1945. Visit them online at Madej, Miris, and Ricky. Well, this one living up to the hype early on, Matt. Nine five binders, 3.57 to play here in the first quarter. Yeah, I think both teams are still feeling each other out a little bit. And Geneva seems a little bit nervous here with three early, really unforced turnovers. Uh, but I look for them to settle down and uh, maybe get the ball inside a little bit here in, in the next couple possessions. We'll go back to the 1-3-1 one zone. Ruddy on the wing. He's up top with Pasolacqua as they push it all the way to the corner. As Jason Anderson has come in for the first time. And meanwhile, all the way to the basket, Luke Ruddy with a very aggressive drive, and that makes it 11-5 Minders. Great take by Luke. He saw the opening, really uncontested right to the rim. So Geneva basketball, Hickey on the wing. They reverse it around for Sweeney. Minders are sticking with that tight man to man. Sweeney, tough pull-up fade away, and it's an air ball, but in the right place at the right time is Johnson to lay it up and in for two. Steal by Geneva here. And Geneva gets it right back. Sweeney to the basket. Can't get it to go, but he drew the foul. That'll be the first foul on the Blue Devils. And so Sweeney will go to the line. And as we take a look at the replay, nope. that's a heck of a job to get that long arm in there and come up with the steal. Yeah, Geneva seems, one thing I noticed, they got, they're got they really long. They, and they got good overall size. They might not be as big as Minders in, with the two big guys inside, but one through five, they seem like they got a pretty good length. That was Akia Jackson who came up with the steal. He is coming off the bench for Geneva, first guy off the bench, and two big misses from Sweeney right there. And so Minders kind of dodges a little bit of a bullet. It's 11-7. Three minutes to play in the first quarter. Pasolacqua was double teamed. The deflection went right to his teammate Miller, but then Miller kind of panicked a little bit and threw it out of bounds. Yeah, he, he got in a tough position there for a big guy, a couple guys around him, and uh, he was just looking to get rid of it and threw it a little too high for Brandon. So Sweeney will bring it up for the Panthers. 
Had been 9 of 11 from the free throw line so far this year, and it was a 70% shooter last year, so a little bit out of character for him to miss both of those free throws. Sure. I'll be interested to see if Geneva tries to post Sweeney on Pasolacqua down low. He's got, you know, four or five inches on him probably. Donahue got a great look, but his teardrop just came up a little bit short. And off the miss, we'll have an alternate possession, give it back to Minders with 2.35 to play in the first quarter. Donahue's probably Geneva's best three-point threat. He really likes to shoot the corner threes, and uh, he hit a little teardrop there, wasn't able to convert it. Again, Ruddy and Pasolac will go with the even front offense against that 1-3-1 zone. Here's an open look from deep off the mark from Anderson. Great offensive rebound, but the putback too strong from Ruddy. Another three from Anderson, and this one finds the mark. Great job by Ruddy coming in there, getting the rebound, and Miller kept it alive, made a nice kick out. Wide open three for Anderson. All five field goals for Minders, five different players, Matt. Yeah, they got great balance this year. They, they really look for each other, and they really seem to like playing together this year. Under two minutes to play in the first quarter, Geneva basketball, 16 on the shot clock as Sweeney isolated against Pesalacqua. They're going to set a high ball screen. Sweeney, three defenders can't finish. Offensive rebound, though, Jackson. Boy, a lot of the offense running through Sweeney right now and a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff. Yeah, and not a lot of great sets here by Geneva early. It's been you know, a couple pick and rolls at Sweeney. There's a yeah, open there's three. an open look from Donahue, but that's too strong. Monster rebound by Terrell Johnson, and he draws the foul. He's a great athlete, and uh, he just went after that and got it. And uh, Miners needs to put a body on him, obviously. Yeah, just came all the way from the free throw line that time. Connor Miller couldn't find him in time. I think one thing you're going to notice, too, Geneva's having a little bit of a tough time blocking out out of their zone. Miner's got a couple offensive rebounds there. Even and though you're in the zone, you still got to find somebody and box them out. Yeah. Now anybody who follows Syracuse basketball <laughs> knows the difficulties of rebounding out of a zone sometimes. With that said, I've been impressed with, and I know we've been playing some <laughs> smaller teams, but Syracuse has rebounded better this year than last. Yeah, got they, some big cards. Yeah, they look great this year. And, uh, you know, I know Brent, uh, C.J. Fair was talking about that uh, Michael Carter-Williams is leading the team in rebounding, which is a little bit unusual, but well, two he's trend, a great player. Two trends early on here, Matt. One is Geneva's missing at the free throw line, but the other is Geneva all over the offensive glass. Yeah, they're, they're really using their athleticism on that glass. Donahue has it on the left wing. Again, another high ball screen, this time from Johnson, and a three from Donahue. He's a great shooter. He's been starting for Geneva for two or three years and uh, knocking down threes for... You know, all three of those years, you can't leave them open. And ball loose right near the center circle. Great hustle, a diving Luke Ruddy kept it alive, and we're going to have a foul against Geneva. Boy, Ruddy using all his length horizontally that time on yeah, the floor. I'm not so sure. You might, might want to. Miners might want to drop another guard back there and have him bring the yeah. ball up instead of letting Ruddy handle it so much. He, he's a, you know, he's a good ball handler for his size, but he's got a couple turnovers here early. That always makes me nervous, Matt, when you have your your four man or one of your big men bringing it up against the press. From a coaching standpoint, what's what's the strategy there when you? when you have your big guy with one of your guards. <laughs> you want it to get to the guard as soon as you can. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, you don't, you don't want your 6'5 uh, center handling the ball too much. Pass Aqua for three off the mark. There's Ruddy again. Ruddy kept his dribble alive on the baseline, and then they call oh. him for a travel. I thought they were going to get a foul on one of the two defenders there on the baseline. He was sandwiched between Steve Dolgas, who's come in for the first time, and Jordan Donahue. Yeah, not sure how they got a travel there. Yeah. But, uh, it looked like he kept his dribble alive and went out of bounds off Geneva. But. 14-10, and looks like there's a one-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Shot clock's at 24, game clock is at 25. So essentially, Geneva could hold for the last shot if they want, nice but shot. as I say that, a teardrop from Donahue. Great move by Donahue. Uh, that's a tough shot, for especially at the high school level. Stop and nice little floater. Down to 10 seconds. Oh. Spin, pass a lot well with a kiss. Great move by Brandon. Oh, that was nice. Six <laughs> points for Pasolacqua nearly going. Two seconds as Sweeney goes up, misses the shot, and that is how the first corner will come to an end with the Blue Devils leading the Panthers 16-12. to 12. And again, thanks so much to our fine sponsors that make these webcasts possible. We thank our friends over at Mede, Miris, and Ricky, but also Generations Bank, the things you value at a bank are deeply rooted values that they've held for more than 140 years. Learn more at mygenbank.com. Go and we're going to take a commercial here at the end of the first quarter.
Call Made, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Made, Maris, and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Made, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we've greeted you by name, planned with you for the future, and stood by you when you needed a hand. It's what we do, and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch, or go to mygenbank.com. Underway in the third quarter, Steve Dolgas gets free in the half court and lays it up and in for Geneva. So 16-14, here's a three from Ricky off the mark and a whistle to foul on the rebound. And it looks like it's gonna stay here with Minders. Here's the basket that we missed as we came out of break. Both teams, both teams having a little trouble on the uh, defensive boards. There's a lot of offensive rebounds in this game. and. Uh, you know, Geneva seems to be having a tough time out of that one 3 one getting rebounds, and Minders have a tough time boxing out of their man. Foul is charged to Trevor Duduro. Pass the lockway, able to get the rebound and keep it with Minders. 1-3-1 zone from Geneva. That's really all we've seen so far for the most part. Talking with, talking with Coach Miller, they play about two-thirds of the time, he says they'll play that 1-3-1. There's a deflection. Again, Minders winds up with a loose ball. Still plenty of time to shoot. 20 on the shot clock. Pass Alakwa, penetration and dish, but Ruddy couldn't finish, gets it back and had it stripped loose by Tyler Wilkie. Wow, that was a great dish by Pass Alakwa. Yeah, I like to see Miners attack that one through one a little bit different. It seems like they got five guys on the perimeter, you know, get the ball in that foul line area and then, you know, try to get it on the baseline. That's Wil how I would attack the one through one. Wilkie finds Dolgus on the backdoor cut and he is fouled and will head to the free throw line. Geneva was 0 for 4 from the charity stripe of the first quarter, so they're gonna try and get their act together at the free throw line, and a chance here for Dolgas to tie it if he can hit both. The clock stops with 6.49 remaining wow. in the second, and he misses as well. Boy, free throw shooting is one of those things that can become contagious, and you can throw the percentages out the window. Yeah. It kind of spreads from teammate to teammate. You know, Sweeney started off with the two misses there, and it kind of spread to the other guys, and uh, you know, this is probably gonna be a tight game down the stretch, and they can't leave those points on the foul line. And another miss, and a rebound to Ruddy. So still a two-point lead for Minders. That was the fourth team foul that was called, actually the third team foul that was called against Minders, and we'll stay here with the Blue Devils as it was stripped away from Connor Miller. Looks like Geneva's gonna go with a 2-1-2 two -two out of the, underneath out of bounds. Yeah, they'll switch it up on the inbounds plays. Just way too much on that three-pointer from Jason Anderson. Yeah, I think Miners can get a little bit better shot than that. That's kind of a rush. And there's a foul as Trevor Deduro takes it into the lane. And so he will head to the line. Let's see if they can make one here. Yeah, 0 for 6 from the free throw line thus far. Again, Geneva. Trailing 16-14. Duduro, 5 of 7 from the free throw line on the season. Again, this Geneva team, 3-0. There you go. We talked about the win on Saturday over Bishop Timon. They also played Tuesday and Thursday last week, and they waxed Whitman and Palmac, 91-50 over Whitman, and then 71-38 over the Raiders. Yeah, they really had their way in those first two games, putting up big offensive numbers. They see, you know, Miners seems to have slowed them down a little bit here tonight. One of two from the line, so it's still one of eight from the free throw line. There is a big block from Junior Sims, but Miners still with possession. Oh, boy. Oh, pass a lock with pass, picked off by Sweeney, and he misses the layup. And we'll see, is it going to be a tie up or an over the back? Tie up. And the Miners faithful doesn't like it. I think Sweeney thought he got fouled. Maybe the ref was looking for a little makeup call there. 
Timeout Minders. So Minders kind of feels the momentum going to Geneva right now. They're still clinging to a one point lead, but good timeout from head coach Mike Fields. Yeah, things get a little testy. I think, uh, you know, Sweeney thought he got fouled and Pasolacco got the ball and the Geneva kid kind of came over his back and uh, they call a tie up and uh, it's, I think it, Geneva's gonna keep possession yeah, out of bounds Geneva, right there. Geneva ball off of the arrow and Brian Miller's not happy with whatever adjudication has come down from can, Mark Frankel and Ron Cooper. Can really tell Geneva's really up for this game. Every yeah. basket, their bench is up cheering. And, uh, well, you knew they would be. I mean, you get sure. off to the 3-0 start, and, and not only losing those four games the last two years to Miners, but the way that they've lost them, just some, some heartbreakers. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you know, I think they, they kind of feel like they owe Miners. And, uh, you know, this has big league, league implications on the road at Minders. If they could steal one here tonight, it would be huge for uh, the league standings. The four losses by just a combined 14 points. So, I mean, we're talking not yeah. much in terms of the margin. And it's actually Minders basketball. Oh, nice. We can't see the possession arrow from uh, from our locale. We don't have it up on the scoreboard. Another deflection out of that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Yeah, Geneva's length really giving them problems handling the ball. Anderson in the corner. Very active defense out of that 1-3-1. One, one. Anderson forces it and airballs it again. Yeah, Goal Anderson's with the forced, rebound. He's forced a couple here. He needs to calm down. You know, he's a good player. He just needs to play his game. Not, he doesn't need the force. Taduro across the lane, hangs in the air, and draws a foul. That'll be the fifth team foul against Minders. This Geneva team has an advantage in terms of depth. You know, yeah, talking with yeah, Geneva's going to go 8, 9, 10 deep, and, uh, you know, I think they're looking to wear Minders down. You know, coach is getting guys in and out of there, and uh, Minders only played, uh, they played seven guys so far, but uh, they had their starters out there for the majority of the time. Boy, this is getting unbelievable now with Geneva's free throw shooting. It's now one of nine from the free throw line. I guess it's a good way to slow them down, just keep putting them at yeah. the line. But if wow. you're Geneva, I mean... And those but two weren't even close. Talk about a, a helpless feeling if you're a coach. It's going to go out of bounds off of Minders as Jason Anderson dove for the ball but couldn't corral it. And so Geneva will inbound in the front court. 5.20 left to play here in the first half. Minders still somehow clinging to a one-point lead. Dolgus gives it up to the free throw line for Johnson, who's back in the game now. Remember, he feasted on the boards. The first quarter, down to 20 on the shot clock. Sweeney swings it over, Dolgas for three, got it. Nice possession there for Geneva. They really ran their offense, they got the down screen. He came off the pick and knocked it down. And the Panthers take their first lead at 18-16 with 4.50 to play in the half. Goes out of bounds, both officials look at each other and then finally, Ron Cooper says it is Geneva basketball. Yeah, Miners are going to have to keep that ball in the corner unless they're wide open because Geneva's just trapping the smaller Jimmy Ricky there in the sideline. He had nowhere to go with it. Tried to bounce it off his foot, and I think he missed his foot. So 18-16 the score, and this is now an 11-2 run for the Geneva Panthers. Minders at one point led this thing 14-7. Dolgas has it right in front of the Minders bench. Here's a three out top from Junior Sims. Big guy steps out. I didn't know he had that in his game, but he buried the three from the top of the key. First points in a Geneva uniform for the transfer from DeSales, Junior Sims. Anderson, Minders really needing an answer off the mark. Two Geneva players collide, Dolgus and Johnson, and then finally track down. Minders got the open look there, but Anderson wasn't able to knock it down. 21 to 16, a 14 to two run now for the Panthers. Dolgus has it on the wing. They swing it down to Johnson on the low post. Lost the handle, but gets it back. Miller just stood straight up and just laid it in for two. Pasolacqua in the traffic. Anderson again, no. And the rebound to Geneva's Holt. Uh, to Johnson, rather. Yeah. Miners is really living and dying by that three, and right now they're not knocking them down. They need to change something up. Well, they missed in transition, however. There's a block. And the rebound comes right to Luke Ruddy, who lays it up and in for two. Junior Sims had the shot block, but Ruddy stuck with it. Great and hustle by Ruddy to clean that up and get the two points and break that uh, run that Geneva was on. I couldn't remember the last time Miners actually scored a bucket. It's been a while. 
So clock will stop with 3.21 left to play here in the first half. It's now 23-18, a five-point lead for the Geneva Panthers as finally a Minders bucket puts a stop to uh, what was a 14-2 run and had a chance to finish in transition on the other end too. So, Yeah, a little turnaround there for Minders. Uh, they were able to stop the bleeding for the time being. And, uh, you know, Minders really needs to settle down. They haven't really taken too many good shots this quarter. Uh, you know, maybe get the ball inside the Ruddy a little bit, get him inside against that 1-3-1, and let him go to work. He's got good, good post moves in there. He can use his right or left hand, but he really hasn't touched the ball on the block yet this game. And Steve Dolgas has been a nice spark off the bench for the Geneva Panthers, the 5'10", 145-pound junior with five points here in the second quarter. So if you're minders, man, I think you're just looking to you know, kind of weather the storm here on this run. You're down five, but you know with that long drought, things could be worse, and now you just try and see if you can get it back close going into the half. Yeah, Geneva made a nice run there, but you know the good thing for minders is they are only down five points. Uh, you know, they're obviously not out of this game by any stretch of the means. They just need to, Geneva's length and quickness is really causing them some problems. They just need to clean it up a little bit on offense, take some better shots. They're really rushing it a little bit. They need to settle down. And there's a turnover, miscommunication, two on two the other way. Ricky hits the slashing Luke Ruddy, and he is fouled. So Ruddy is going to go to the free throw line. We've been talking about all the misses from Geneva at the line. Haven't been a whole lot of trips to the line for Minders, just two of three. And this will be their first trip to the line here in the second quarter. Nice Foul run. one against Sims. Nice run out there by Ruddy. He can really run the floor. He's a, he's a great distance runner. And uh, he can really get out and run the floor for the big guy, and the guards do a good job of finding him. 6'5", 185 pound junior coming off a 17 point performance in the loss to Wayne. And both free throws miss, however. And Geneva back quickly the other way. Jordan Donahue over to Sweeney. Wide open, nobody guarding Sims in the low post, and he lays it in. Yeah, not sure how you can lose Sims underneath, but he was wide open, and he Sweeney was, made a nice pass. He was just jumping up and down, saying, come on, guys, I'm open. 25-18, 2.40 to play in the half. Pass the lock with for three, no good. Great inside position, however, and the putback from Connor Miller. Nice job by Miller, that weak side rebound. It's been open all game, and uh, you know, luckily Miners has been able to put a couple putbacks in there. They could be down double figures right now. Panthers by five, Sweeney bobbled it. Here's a deep three from Donahue off the mark, and another rebound for Ruddy. Ruddy's doing a good job on both, both sides on the boards, offensively and defensively. Pass to Lacqua, behind the back and ahead, it's stripped. Johnson, three on two, keeps it himself and lays it in for two. Terrell Johnson has played a real nice first half. Great take by the big guy there. Juke made a nice move, finished the layup. Six for Johnson, it's 27-20. Pass to Lacqua. The smaller minus guards are really struggling with the 1-3-1 right now. Ricky way out there, was half it out and came out. Pasolacqua crashed the boards, had it blocked from behind by, by Sims, and the loose ball to the Panthers. Geneva's length really caused a lot of trouble. They got Terrell Johnson out at the point of that 1-3-1, he's a super, superb athlete, and uh, he's really causing those guards some trouble, seeing they're kind of penetrating, leaving their feet a little bit, and uh, getting a little bit of trouble. Sweeney from downtown off the mark, tipped in by Junior Sims, and you just get the feeling that Sims has been waiting <laughs> for his opportunity. Again, he has not played in the first three games for Geneva because of some academic issues, and he has come out tonight and made a real impact. Yeah, I think the first quarter is kind of finding his way, and he's really, this quarter has been dominant. Yep, all seven of his points in the second quarter. Minders with the answer from Miller. He has six, and it's now 29-22, under a minute to play in the second quarter. Good shot by Miller there. And Minders has now gone to a 1-3-1 with Ruddy out top. Yeah, last couple possessions now. Not sure if I like having Luke that far away from the basket, but we'll see how it works out. Donahue at the high post. Triple team, oh. he fell, that's a travel. Well, 39.3 remaining. So you can essentially hold for the last shot here if you want with Minders, but we saw a situation earlier in the game where Geneva could have held but did not. Miners typically doesn't, they, they'll take their first available yeah. shot, I would think, and uh, you know, is gonna have a little time anyway, so we'll see what they yeah, do here. Yeah, four second differential, I think. Yeah, that's, that leaves a little bit of time anyway. You can really see how they're trying to push 
pass to Lockwood towards the sideline in the top of that 1-3-1 one, one zone. That was Akia Jackson who's playing the top now. Down to 21 seconds. Ricky lost it. I think it went off the foot of the defender, and it did. So Minders will hold on. 16.8 on the game clock, 13 to shoot. Miners needs to set some screens against that zone. Oh, oh how <laughs> Akia Jackson didn't come up with a steal, I will not know. Boy, already at seven of the shot clock. I don't know if Pasolacqua realizes it. Down to three on the shot clock. The long three from Ricky, air ball, and so let's see if they put a little time back on the clock here because it's down to 1.8 and about a full second ran off the clock after the shot clock went off, but I don't think that Brian Miller is aware of it. For now, he's pointing at the clock. They should have justified maybe up to three, four seconds. Yeah. yeah at least a full, see, there's a three second differential. Now, when you get into tenths of a second, it can be hard <laughs> to figure out, but. Not really a great possession there by Miners. Yeah. They end up with a you know 24 foot three pointer, and uh, I think the length of Geneva got into Ricky a little bit there. Um, you know, they're going to have to figure something out at halftime how to attack that 1 3 1 because it's just giving them fits. You know, 22 points here in this second quarter. They really haven't had too many attempts. I think all their scoring has come from putbacks. And yeah. uh, Ruddy had the one nice drive there. Minders does have a foul to give right here, by the way. Sweeney. I give it. To midcourt. Oh, oh it was on line. Halfway down and out. But an impressive second quarter by the Geneva Panthers. They trailed 16 to 12 at the end of one. However, they outscore Minders 17 to six here in the second quarter, Matt. And so, Miners yeah. will have to head to the locker room. Mike Fields will look to make some adjustments, but you know, we've been talking about this series. It's not the first time Miners has found themselves in a big hole against Geneva. Now, a couple years ago, they were down 18, 20 points, and they were able to come back. Uh, I'm sure, and the Geneva coach is gonna talk about that also, that you know this game isn't over by any means for Geneva, and uh, Miners has come out strong in the second half numerous times against them, and uh, we'll see what the second half brings. All right, we'll send it to Jim Sinecropi for your halftime festivities and we'll be back with the second half action 29 22 geneva panthers with a seven point lead at the half on finger lakes one dot tv thanks brendan jim sinacropi here inside the finger lakes one dot com studios in downtown seneca falls where you've been enjoying the first half of action between geneva and minders in a key early season finger lakes east matchup we've got something special for you on the halftime show tonight it's a compilation of press clippings videos and photos from minders academy's 1992 season uh, the magical run to the state title which happened now a little over 20 years ago we'll have that for you when we get back but first, a message from these important sponsors who make this webcast possible. Attention Finger Lakes residents, have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madey, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Madey, Maris, and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Madey, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we've greeted you by name, planned with you for the future, and stood by you when you needed a hand. It's what we do and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch or go to mygenbank.com. www.fingerlakes1.com 
And welcome back, everybody. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank our fine sponsors, Mede, Maris, and Ricky, Generations Bank, and the Omen Theater. Without their support, webcasts like tonight's presentation would not be possible. So thank you to all our sponsors. As I promised, here is a walk down memory lane for anyone who followed the Minders Academy basketball team in the early 90s. You're going to see in this video uh, Matt Verkey, who's calling tonight's game with Brendan Harrington, and guys like Pat Prayan, Jerry Anderson, Kevin Korzineski, Billy Grant. And uh, this footage was originally compiled by Ted Novak. We've taken most of what he's done and put a little different music to it and uh, we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you back in a few moments
And we hope you enjoyed that presentation. Again, special thanks to Ted Novak, who originally compiled all that information back in 1992. We used pretty much what he did verbatim, um, and we thank him for letting us share that with you. So without any further ado, I'd like to send it back to Arthur L. Baker Gymnasium in Seneca Falls for the second half of action between Geneva and Minders. Thanks so much, Jim. And, uh, boy, I kind of feel like I'm not worthy over here with Mr. Verkey. Uh, hey, my career high was 10 at Naples uh, with the big green. But, man, that was kind of fun to take a look back at that. And, uh, boy, what a run you guys had. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a great one. Great run. It was a lot of fun. And uh, it was a lot of years ago now looking back 20 years ago. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's fun, fun to see that. It's great how those memories stick with you now. And, I was in Naples, and our, our soccer team made a big run right. uh, all the way to the state semifinals, and you remember a heck of a lot about it. Um, we get ready for the second half here. 29-22, Geneva with a seven-point lead as we start the second half. And, you know, really I think the difference up front, Sims and Johnson combined for 13 points. Uh, Junior Sims playing his first game for yeah. the Panthers and really dominating the front court. Sims had a really nice second quarter there, really steady Geneva down, got on the boards, hit a big three. Uh, you know, I, th I think Miners should kind of feel lucky to be where they are. You know, Geneva missed a bunch of free throws. Sweeney was held to only five points, I think. Yep. And, uh, you know, Miners are still in the game. And it, it could be a little bit worse, but they're still there. They just need to attack that zone a little better, and they'll be right there. Geneva basketball. Sweeney going to let it fly too strong, and the rebound comes down to Miller. Yeah, Sweeney with just five points. And you mentioned the free throws. Panthers one of ten from the free throw line in the first half. They go even six of ten. They're leading by double figures. Sure. It's, yeah, I'm sure the coach probably addressed that a little bit at halftime. And uh, they just need to calm down and make the free throws. Sims feeling it. He fires away from downtown. The long rebound past the lock. will just let it go into the cheerleaders. And so it'll be Minders basketball. Yeah, he looks pretty comfortable all the three-point line. He's got a nice-looking shot. And... Uh, yeah, I'm sure Coach, doesn't, Coach Miller doesn't mind him taking that shot. Starters are back out there for both teams. Donahue. I think Ford. Anderson started this half for Miners. Oh, yeah, I was just yeah, double-checking that. And the only change then is Anderson uh, in the starting lineup for Liam Carraher. He's having a tough night from the field tonight, Anderson. Yeah. I think he's probably about one for ten at this yeah, point. Yeah, he started and, uh, with those two air balls, and it just seemed to kind of carry over. So... Geneva starters out there, Donahue, Sweeney, Hickey, Sims, and Johnson. And then there's the one change, uh, Anderson for Carraher, Pasolak with Ruddy, Miller, and Ricky. And uh, Miner's sticking with the 1-3-1 here as well right now, and we'll see how uh, Geneva attacks that. And good ball movement and an open look for three, but off the mark from Donahue. Another offensive rebound from Johnson, couldn't finish, but now a whistle, and that will be a loose ball foul against Geneva. I think they got Sims there with a little push in the back. Uh, both teams really struggling to rebound out of that 1-3-1. Miners has uh, Jimmy Ricky down there in the bottom, so he's going to be at a size disadvantage every time down there against Geneva. Yeah, 5-7, a buck 30 for Ricky. <laughs> Not easy to rebound the basketball. No, Geneva's got some good athletes yeah. and some long kids down there as well. Oh, pass to Lacqua. We had a perfect angle at yeah. an opening with Luke Ruddy, but didn't see it. Now swings it outside. Anderson into the corner. Here's Ruddy. Nice stroke. From downtown, Luke Ruddy with the first bucket for either team here in the second half and pulls Minders within four with six minutes left to play in the third quarter. Big shot from Luke, you know, gets Minders going here in the second half. Seven points for Ruddy now, and then meanwhile on the other end, Junior Sims with a bucket. He leads all scorers with nine points with that latest bucket. Yeah, just using his size there, he's kind of left open in the middle of that zone. Ruddy is now the leading scorer for Minders. Miller missed the chippy off glass, and Geneva with the rebound. Here they come, Donahue. Hits the trailing Hickey. Sims wants it, but by the time they tried the entry pass, he was blanketed. Pasolacqua went behind the back and results in a turnover. Hickey with the loose ball. Sweeney to the rack lays it in. Nice take there by Sweeney off the Pasolacqua turnover. Brandon, a little too much dribble in there. Nice fade down the ruddy. Hangs in the air long enough to avoid the shot being blocked and Ruddy able to put it up and in for two. One thing I love about Pasolaco in his four years, he never puts his head down. You know, he turned the ball yep. over there and he came right back, found Ruddy, got a nice assist there. 
33-27. And, and how much does it help to have a guy like Brandon at the helm in a game like this where, you know, you're down seven at the half? He's not going to panic. No, definitely not. You know, he, he was a Class C MVP a couple years ago in the sectional finals. He's Another, been through it all. Boy, and Terrell Johnson has to be approaching double figures in rebounding if he's not already there and just killing Minders on the offensive glass right now. Yeah, he's really using his length down low. Eight points for Terrell Johnson, 6'3", 195-pound junior, and then the loose ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Minders. 4.24 to play here in the third quarter, a four-point lead for the Geneva Panthers. Yeah, I think Minders might want to switch back to their man-to-man. -man. Their zone is, uh, Geneva seems to be getting inside on them a lot, and uh, it seems like their man-to-man -man was pretty good in the first half. And uh, actually had a mistake on the scoreboard. They just put the extra bucket up, so it's, they put it on the wrong side. So it's actually an eight-point lead for the Panthers. I thought something didn't head up there. 35-27 and a big three from Jordan Donahue. Puts it to double figures for the first time for the Panthers, and we're going to have a timeout for Minders. Yeah, if there's one guy you can't leave in the zone, it's Jordan Donahue. He's pretty much their designated three-point shooter. He's going to knock that shot down the majority of the time. He was wide open. He was able to knock it down. Um, we'll see what Miners does coming out of timeout here. I think they need to maybe switch back to their man. 38-27, Geneva with an 11-point lead. And as we look at the upcoming schedules for both teams, Geneva will head back home for a Friday night matchup with Waterloo. And then they have a whole week before they play again at Panyan. Back home against Midlakes at Newark, and that will be one of our broadcasts coming up on January 8th. And meanwhile, on the other side, Minders hitting the road for a little while, Matt, at Whitman, at Waterloo, and then they're going to head to the Elmira Tournament on the 26th and 27th right after Christmas. Yeah, uh, you know, Minders gets to go on the road there, go to Whitman, who hasn't traditionally been very very strong last couple years than their rivalry game at Waterloo, which you never really know what's going to happen. Then they go down to Elmira. It's their first year playing in that tournament and not really sure to what, to, what to expect out of the teams down there. Our next broadcast here on FingerLakes1.com is going to be my alma mater, Naples, visiting South Seneca Romulus next Tuesday night. Naples is off to a 3-0 start. My old coach, Mick Salter. There you go. So 38-27, Minders down 11, and key point in the ball game here midway through the third. That's a big bucket, Ricky for three from the corner. Nice job by Minders out of timeout. They get the steal here. Oh, and they give it back. Looked like Luke Ruddy had the steal, but it was stripped right back, and then Ruddy is called for the foul. But a big three nonetheless from Jimmy Ricky. That's the second three-pointer of the third quarter here. Minders, you know, of course, lives and dies with the three. They had just six points in the second quarter, and they were all on two-point field goals. Yeah, I still think Minders need to utilize their big guys inside a little bit more. Uh, you know, the threes really aren't dropping at a high rate tonight, so I'd like to see them kick it inside a little bit. So far, Geneva has outscored Minders 9-8 to eight here in the third quarter. A seven-point halftime lead is now at eight, but here's a turnover. Running right down the oh. center. Oh, the finger roll spun out. And it will go over to Geneva, and a real missed opportunity there for the Blue Devils. Yeah, nice take by Luke. He made a nice deal and was, you know, going a little fast, wasn't able to get a good angle, and it just rolled out on him. It looks like a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one here. Now they'll back off and fall back into that 1-3-1, one, one, I assume, and they will. Geneva, Donnie, you up top. Geneva really doing a nice job against the zone. They're penetrating and kicking out to the shooters. Donnie, you real good, good quick release right there. Nice job by Sweeney, he penetrated in and found his uh, backcourt mate and Donahue knocked down another three. That's the second one this quarter. Second straight game, Donahue's gotten into double figures. He had 10 against Bishop Timons and now has 11 tonight. Pass Alakwa and he got hit hard and drew the foul from Junior Sims. So with the lead back up to 11 at 41 to 30, it'll be Brandon Pass Alakwa to the free throw line. Yeah, Miner's not really making up any ground here so far in the third yeah. quarter. They, uh, you know, they're sticking with that 1-3-1, one, one, and Sweeney, Sweeney's been, uh, you know, he found Donahue a few times, and Donahue knocked down the threes, and they're still still getting beating him up on the boards a little bit. We'll see if, uh, I know Miner's gone to a little bit of a half-court trap, trying to speed up the game a little bit maybe and get some uh, easy steals and some easy conversions on the other end. That was just the second foul on Sims. Foul trouble really not an issue in this game. In fact, there was nobody with more than one foul at halftime. Pasolacqua goes one of two from the line. He has seven, and the lead is 10, 41-31, 2.40 to play. 
And you get it across against the pressure. Trapping out of the 1-3-1 one, one on Donahue, and we're going to get a timeout here called by Geneva. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So each team has spent two timeouts now and have four remaining. Mr. Verkey, class of 1992. Well, not only the Section 5 tournament MVP in two different tournaments as a sophomore in 90 and as a senior in 92, 57 points in a Section 5 tournament game. And then uh, the New York State Class C Championship in 1992. And you dropped the 60 spot against Midlakes, huh? Yeah, uh, <laughs> at, at, at Midlakes, the uh, game got a little bit out of hand, but uh, it was a fun game. The, uh, I'm not sure where our producer found that picture, but... Uh, awesome. It, yeah. Jim Sinecropi, our producer and director today. Jeremy Hunt is on camera. And I am Brendan Arrington. This is the first broadcast I've gotten to do with hoops with FingerLakes1.com. So I'm excited to be here and been looking forward to working with you, man. I've heard lots of great things. Uh, I, Jim, Jim uh, said working with you is going to be great, and it has been. Uh, you know, I just I, I just love picking the brains of, uh, of people who have been around this game a long time. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I enjoy being here with you. Uh, you know, I love high school basketball, and, you know, obviously, especially being in, back in this gym and watching Miners play is great. Well, right now, Miners just trying to hang in there with the Geneva Panthers, a team with a lot of firepower, and shot clock running down, and they're not going to get a shot off. But we will note that Donahue <laughs> just parried another one, which he's already hit two threes here in the third quarter, so... Well, that's always going to upset you a little bit as a coach coming out yeah. of a timeout. You don't get the I, shot off. I don't think they realize they only had about 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah. They kind of passed around a little bit. And, you know, luckily uh, for Minders that they didn't have an extra second there because Donahue buried another three. Well, 208 remaining in the third quarter as that was deflected out of bounds. And a big, big final 208. Yeah, I think Minders needs to get this down, you know, hopefully five, six points, uh, you know, so they can make a run yeah. here in the fourth quarter. I think your goal get into the two possession game, six and under. Well, Ricky got bumped from behind. He goes all the way around, finds Pasolacqua. Ruddy kicks it right back out. I'd like to see Ruddy make a move in there. You know, he's a big guy. He's, he's great inside with, with his uh, right left hand. Anderson shot spun out, but Connor Miller with the tip back. Boy, it just seems to be one of those days for Anderson. Can't get a break and get something going. Yeah, that one went in, in and out. Pretty good shot. Shot was blocked from behind. I think... Miller got a piece of it as Terrell Johnson elevated. There we go. That could be a big play if Miners can convert here especially. A minute and a half left to play, and just as I say that here in the third quarter, the turnover. Yeah, Ruddy drew a crowd that time. They got it into him. Looks like they're sending the double team to him. He did a good job of kicking it back out, and uh, unfortunately, Miners threw it away. Steve Dolgus is back in the game. He really gave Geneva a spark in the second quarter with five points. Connor Miller deflects that pass. Geneva holds on. Sweeney, boy, looked like he got raked right across the forearm there, but no call. Here comes Minders the other way. Tough finish and one from Luke Ruddy. Great job by Anderson there. He got out in the break and uh, got it over Ruddy, who had a great finish, got the end one. Nice left-handed shot by Luke on the break. Boy, great job. He uses that right shoulder to protect the basketball, shield the basketball, and finish. And a chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. We talked about getting it to a two-possession game. It's at six right now. Still a minute ten left in the third quarter as Ruddy goes to the line. He it's is right. 0 for 2. Wow. Mm. Some, these teams need to get in the gym and shoot some free throws. Yeah, both teams leaving a lot of points at the free throw line, Matt. One minute left to play in the third quarter. A six-point lead for the Panthers. Minders back to the 1-3-1. They really got to find Donnie. He's got the ball now, so obviously they got a guy on him, but they need to locate him. Oh, Pasolacqua almost had the strip. They reverse it all the way around. Not enough time for Dolgus to get the shot off. Sweeney with 10 on the shot clock, halfway down and out. Nice, and nice fight by Brandon down low, get that rebound. Yeah, that, that is a scrappy rebound from a point guard. Five second differential here. Ruddy at the high post. Anderson splits it, and he traveled. Yeah, fish was all over it, and so. Yeah, just trying to do a little bit too much there, probably. Uh, the offense was kind of breaking down. Uh, I'd still like to see they really haven't got Ruddy in a great position with the ball down low yet. 26.3 remaining. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one for Minders, but not really trapping out of it. It's more token pressure, and they're looking to trap in the half court. Yeah, just trying to give them a little trouble bringing it up. 
Johnson double teamed at the high post. Wide open, Dolgas for three. Air ball that maybe grazed the rim and it will be Minders basketball. Hesselaco really fighting underneath there, coming down trying to help him on the rebounding. 10.9 remaining. Minders trying to shave into a six point deficit. Seven seconds left. Shoot it. Baseline, Miller not really looking to shoot. Hesselaco now caught in the corner. Nowhere to go and good defense from Geneva. And that is how the third quarter will come to an end. A six point lead for the Panthers, 41-35. We'll step aside and be back for the fourth quarter on FingerLinks1.tv. Attention Finger Lakes residents, have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Made Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Made Maris and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Made Maris and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we've greeted you by name, planned with you for the future, and stood by you when you needed a hand. It's what we do, and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch, or go to mygenbank.com. Well, back here at Baker Gym at Minders Middle School, Seneca Falls. We get ready for the fourth quarter. Geneva with a six-point lead, 41 to 35. It'll be Minders basketball. And, and we were chatting a little bit during the break, man. If you're Minders, you feel pretty fortunate to be down only by a half dozen points as the end of the fourth quarter. Sure, down six with the ball. And, uh, you know, really not doing a whole lot, but you're still in the game. Against the 1-3-1. One, one, and, boy, Anderson just cannot find the mark. Pass Alacqua with a great hustle play. But he was stepping on the baseline as he made that attempt to save the basketball from going out of bounds. Yeah, good hustle by Brand there. Not a great possession for Miners there, but uh, they need to get a stop here and you know trim into the six-point margin. Against the full court pressure, Geneva able to get it up. Junior Sims is back in the game. He's been huge in his Geneva Panthers debut, the transfer from DeSales. Yeah, Sims and, Sims and Donnie were really key so yeah. far this game to me. Sweeney kind of having on the boards. Yeah, Johnson's been killing the boards, and Sweeney's been kind of having an off shooting night for him. But uh, you know, he's he's been finding down here a few times, and there he is again. Ten on the shot clock. He'll let it fly oh. halfway down and out, but an offensive rebound from Sims and lays it in. Yeah, Junior Sims got a big body down there, just kind of forced his way in and got the rebound and finished it. Lead is back up to eight. Ricky. Big three ball from the corner from Jimmy Ricky. He's oh. fearless. He gets rid of it quick and knocked down. Brandon got in the lane and found him. Cut the lead to five. Came in shooting 55% from beyond the arc. 11 of 20 in the first two games. And he's continued that pace. He's got three more here today. He's already got 14 threes this year. Oh, just missing the steal was Miller. And then that left Sims all alone to lay it in for two. Yeah, Sims is really hurting him inside. 13 points now for the DeSales transfer to the turnover for Minders. Seven point lead, Sims goes outside and hits. Nice addition from the sales for Geneva. He's, he's played great this wow. game. Boy, you add that to what already is a very talented Geneva roster. And this team starts to look awful scary in the Finger Lakes East. And here come the Panthers again. Dolgus buried it. And Minder's going to have to take a timeout. The Geneva Panthers with back-to-back -back threes from Sims and Dorgas open up a 13-point lead, 51-38. And that's a big sequence here early in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was huge. Pasolacco kind of had a high dribble. He lost the ball. Mind, or Geneva came down, hit a three. Then they went into Ruddy. He was a little careless with it, turned it over. They came back, spotted another guy in the corner, hits another three. Big quick six hole run there and uh, you know puts them up 13 with just uh, was it, just over six minutes to go here. Uh, Miners has got themselves in a real hole right now. And Dolgus has really been 
a big presence off the bench. Came in averaging four points per game over the first three. Has eight tonight. Miners has won 30 consecutive games here at Arthur Baker Gymnasium. And so a chance now in back-to-back -back games for Minders to see two long streaks come to an end in terms of a 46-game winning streak inside the Finger Lakes. Well, they were in the FL West and then two years in the FL East. Right. And then uh, now this long home winning streak as well. Yeah, just an amazing run. Miners has been on uh, with that league winning streak and the home winning streak. Um, and uh, that home winning streak is in big jeopardy right now. Yeah. Miners are going to have to make a nice run. They've, they've pulled a few games out like this over the past couple years. We'll see if they got it in them tonight. So the timeout, 51-38 with just over six minutes to play. And now every possession crucial for Miners. Really can't afford any turnovers. Open three, and Anderson off the mark again. Long rebound. Wow. Anderson threw the ball, uh, and he's just going to get a warning here, and he is very lucky to have not been teed up. Yeah, Anderson kind of losing his temper a little yeah. bit there. He's had a tough night from the field and uh, kind of got tied up down there in the corner. I'm really the shocked. Down. I'm shocked he wasn't teed up there because yeah. not only did he throw it in the direction of one of the Geneva players, but also the official, Mark Frankel, was right there as well. <laughs> yeah, the ref kind of... Uh, Held on to the whistle a little bit there, but uh, Anderson was lucky. They, Coach Fields got him out of the game right now, settled him down. 5.40 to play. Geneva with a 13-point lead in the basketball. Miners going to stick with that 1-3-1. Sweeney for Donahue. Into the corner. Boy, is Sims feeling it or what? Can't get the roll, but Johnson with the offensive rebound. Miners slapping away at the basketball, and they're going to get one of the interior players. I think it's going to be Ruddy called for the foul. Yeah, we finally get Sims to miss a shot, and Geneva comes up with the offens offensive rebound. Right. Get the ball out on bounce here. you got to be super aggressive on defense now. you got a ton of fouls to give. Nobody's in foul trouble. You've only been called for two fouls, and remember Geneva, one for ten from the free throw line in the first half. They haven't gone to the line at all, Matt, in the second half. Yeah, I, you know, it's kind of surprising. Min you know, Miners are sitting in this 1-3-1. I think they're going to have to get out of it here if they're going to make a run and pick up man-to-man. Pasolacqua steals the pass cross court, lays it in. And a chance to get it back to 10 as he was fouled. Lazy pass from Dolgas cross court, and Pasolacqua run it and took it the other way. Great ankle right there in the replay. Great play by Brandon. I think, they're all out. He, I think he was trying to let him go. He just kind of slipped yeah. in the paint there, and uh, you know Brandon got underneath him a little bit. Uh, great angle on that shot, and you see... <laughs> The pass was intended for Donahue, and his shoulders just kind of shrug <laughs> as if that's two points the other way. And now has a chance to be three. But both teams just leaving a ton of points at the free throw line. Another missed free throw, this time from Pasolacqua. Yeah, Brandon's usually a steady free throw shooter. You know, he's missed a couple here tonight and uh, showed his frustration there a little bit. Minders but, uh, is now three of nine from the line. The two teams are a combined four of 19 from the free throw line. Wow, that's pretty Great much unheard Googly. of. <laughs> All the basketball coaches and purists here uh, at Baker Gymnasium are trying not to watch when the <laughs> kids are headed to the line. And I agree with Brandon, what you were saying, that Miners needs to be aggressive. Start fouling, put, get these guys in the bonus, yeah. and put them on the line. They I mean, haven't been able to knock down the free throw all night. And you, you don't want Geneva taking a full shot clock off as well. And now, with 10 on the shot clock, we're going to foul away from the ball against Brandon Pasolacqua. Yeah, I think he was battling with uh, Sims down low yeah. there and kind of pushed him out of the way to get ready for an off to try to grab the defensive yeah. rebound. So new 35-second shot clock, 439 to play. Almost thrown away on the inbound. Somehow Minders got it back and a tip in from Junior Sims as Akia Jackson missed the shot. Pasolacqua out for Ricky. Boy, Sims is just been huge and pass a lock with a nice little floater baseline that gets Brandon into double figures with 11 points nice 18 shot points Brandon. now for Sims Miner's still sticking with that 1-3-1 one, one. coming up on the midway point of the fourth quarter and an 11 point lead for the Geneva Panthers 18 to shoot Sims catches Seals, but had it stripped from behind by Ricky. Ahead for Ruddy. Step back, three off the back rim, and the rebound comes down to Donahue. 
Nice play by Ricky down here at the defensive end. Sims had him pinned and he was able to, Sims brought it down and Ricky ripped him. Quick hands from Miller. The way seeing Cole Fletcher out of the floor for the first time for Minders, wearing number 12. Minders really not doing anything offensively. They get, you know, they're penetrating and pitching a little bit, but not really getting the ball inside or doing a whole lot of anything. And we'll have a timeout from Minders with 3.21 left to play. Pass the lock with basically Took it past four defenders on that play. He has 13 points now to lead the Blue Devils, and that does get it back to single digits, 53-44. I wouldn't be surprised right now, Matt, if what we've been talking about here is what's going to be addressed in the huddle right now from head coach Mike Field, which is let's get aggressive, guys. If you foul, you foul, because yeah. we you, have you, three you, to give. Yeah, you got nothing to lose. You, you want to get them in the bonus here anyway, so... You know, just be ultra-aggressive, and uh, maybe you get the steal, maybe you foul him. If you foul him, not a big deal. You get, like you said, you got three fouls to give. But uh, the way Geneva shot foul shots tonight, I would have been fouling at the start of the quarter, yeah. start being aggressive. Put these guys on the line, see if they can make a free throw. You know, you're getting beat up. They're hitting threes. They're beating you on the boards. Put them on the line and see if they can, you know, if they knock them down, they win the game. If not, you guys, you know, Minders could have got back into it. You know, the happiest guy that Geneva hasn't gone to the line in the second half is probably Brian Miller, the head coach for Geneva. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, it's, I, I'm sure he's happy about that because uh, I think they're one for ten in the first half. And uh, have they attempted a free throw in the second half? No, no, they're one of ten in the first half and have not gone to the line in the second half. Celebrate the 98th anniversary of the Omen Theater all this month. For showtimes and coming attractions, visit omentheater.com. The Omen Theater, William Street Lions, one of our great sponsors. Glad to be with you. From Baker Gym here in Seneca Falls, Geneva, trying to pick up. A win in the Finger Lakes East and in the process end a 30-game winning streak at home right here in this gym for the Minders Blue Devils. Against the pressure, Panthers able to get it across. Dan Hickey back in the game. He's setting up shop right in front of the Geneva bench. Donahue caught, trapped in the baseline. Dangerous pass. Don't know how Anderson didn't come up with it, man. When it's not going your way, it's not going your way. Donahue three ball is no good. Ruddy with the rebound. Ruddy with a nice rebound. I think he's been missing a little bit playing the top of that 1-3-1 for the rebound. There's Anderson with a beautiful pass ahead for Miller. And still alive. They're hanging around somehow within Foul. seven. They got to start fouling. Terrell Johnson puts it back up top for Donahue. Over to Sweeney. Donahue buries the three. Boy, he's got a confident stroke here in the second half. His third three of the second half. He has 14. And what a big shot that was. He gets it back up to double digits yeah, at 10. He's got a really nice looking stroke. And Sweeney's really done a nice job of locating him the second half. Uh, Donnie's been starting for them the last three years. And, uh, you know, if you leave him open, he's going to knock that down most of the time. Three huge threes here in the fourth quarter. We had the back-to-back -back threes before from Sims and Dolgos. And then at another point where Geneva really needs a hoop, they get the three, up seven from Donahue. Pasolacqua couldn't finish, and it will go over to Geneva. And what a big miss that was. Just every possession magnified right now with just 2.03 left to play. Is yeah, and Miner's still not fouling. You, you, you talked about it. I think you hit the nail on the head with that. They need to be aggressive and start fouling here. Because um, even if Geneva doesn't score another point, they're just going to the, run the clock down. And, uh, you know, there's only two minutes to go here, down 10. You've got to get them on the line. 56-46 Panthers. Trailed early 14-7, but used a 14-2 run in the second quarter to build up a nine-point halftime lead. And that lead has been cut to as few as six here in the second half. But Geneva in control right now. Still three fouls to give. And Minders will be content to use all the shot clock and then hope for some points, and they'll get the points as well with a big fist pump from Steve Dolgos, who goes into double figures now with 11. Charge on Pasolacqua. Wow, he was awfully deep underneath the basket there. Sweeney draws the charge. Dolgos is really having a nice game. Geneva did a real nice job in that last possession. They worked it around. You know, they ran the shot clock yeah. down. Wide open three, and he knocked it down. And we've really seen Geneva attack the corner of that Minders 1-3-1 where you got the bottom guy going back and forth. And uh, they've really, you know, found the open spots and then kicked it out to the open shooters. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no marking on the floor in high school basketball for uh, 
you know, the area underneath where you can't draw a charge inside of that arc as you see in college basketball. Yeah, I think Pesalaco was a little frustrated yeah. there. He, he thought that the uh, could have been a uh, blocking call there. So 59-46 and four three-pointers here in the fourth quarter from the Geneva Panthers as they have outscored the Blue Devils 18 to 11 now here in the fourth quarter. And I think we're going to get another timeout right now. Yeah, and in kind of an unusual game that we, we talked about coming in where, you know, Sweeney's really been held down. You come in averaging 21, 22 points a game. You know, he, he's been held in check. Just the rest of this Geneva team's really stepped up. Junior Sims to transfer some of the sales. You know, I'd probably say he's been the player of the game for Geneva. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for Minders, he decided to make his debut tonight and has just really carried this Geneva team. Sims with 18 points to lead all scores. Also in double figures, Donahue has 14, and Dolgos off the bench has 11. Meanwhile, Brandon Pas uh, Pasolacqua leading the way for the Minders Blue Devils with 13, nine points from Ricky, and Miller now in double figures with 10. As we look at upcoming live webcast on FingerLakes1.tv, the big green machine of Naples gonna head to South Seneca Romulus. Did they keep, what did they do for nicknames with South Seneca Romulus? I know South Seneca was the, was the Falcons and Romulus was the Warriors. Yeah, I think they're going, since they're playing the home games at Romulus, I, I would guess they're going with the Warriors. Uh, not really sure how that's working out. Uh, I'll have to, do my, uh, have to do my homework before that game. <laughs> Naples off to a 3-0 start, though. It's, yeah. When's the last time they started 3-0? Any idea? On well, my senior year, we started 4-0. Okay. We had Todd Devlin, but... Uh, I think the Kevin Casey team in the early, late 90s, early 2000s might have. And we're gonna have a jump ball, but no, not a ton of basketball success for Naples. That's a soccer school for yep. sure. You know, I, and I think Minders, you know, their, their league winning streak's coming to end now, their home winning streak's coming to end. I think they need to regroup a little bit and, uh, you know, just really, they didn't really offensively tonight. Yep. They were just off all night, uh, kind of forcing some shots and uh, just didn't play a real smooth game tonight. Now we're seeing Minders give away those fouls and try and get Geneva to the free throw line here with a 13-point lead, 59-46. You know, sometimes having those streaks end can be a good thing, Matt. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, this is, this is a different team from last yeah. year. They, they lost, you know, some, some great players off that team from last year. Uh, the pressure's gone now. They don't have to worry about carrying that burden of, you know, protecting the home court and the league winning streak. And, uh, you know, now they can get together and start yeah. their own streak and I kind of get their own team identity this yeah, year. Yeah, I, I exactly. You know, sometimes I think you're, you're going to be constantly compared and and you'll bring up the streak. And sometimes it can be kind of a relief to get rid of that. And then you can just go out and play basketball, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, I think Miners are going to get better as the season goes on. They got some guys playing this year who didn't play a ton last year. You know, they got experience with Ruddy and Pasolacqua, you know, great point guard. Uh, good big guy inside. Ricky can really knock down the threes. And uh, Miners are down from Class B to Class C this year. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to have a great shot at sectionals. You know, it could be their third in four years. Uh, they just need to stick together. You know, it's not the end of the world here. Uh, Geneva's going to be really good. Um, I, you know, I, I think they're the early favorite to win the league. You know, coming to Miners, ending the home win streak. Um, I think that Geneva Wayne games are going to have a lot to say this year. I was going to say, I think after Miners plays these two teams back to back, there's another miss at the free throw line, by the way, this time. Donahue, he can hit him outside the arc, but steps to the free throw <laughs> line and can't bury it. Meanwhile, Pasolaclu is playing with four fouls because he had to give away so many of those fouls. He got blocked underneath, and here comes Geneva. And we're going to have a foul. Yeah, we kind of talked about it all night, but Geneva's length just really caused him problems. You know, Brandon, he's real tricky. He gets inside, and he just kind of hangs there, and there's not a, not a whole lot of room to get the shot off. He's had his shot blocked a few times tonight, but, uh, you know, I can't say enough about this Geneva team. They, they came out from the get-go. They're intense. Uh, you could tell they really wanted this game and wanted to, you know, get back at Minders kind of for the last couple of years where Minders kind of pulled a few games out from underneath them, and uh, looks like they're going to do that here tonight. You know, you mentioned Geneva and Wayne. Those those two games could go a long way towards deciding the league title just the way the rotation and the schedule goes this year. They will not meet until January 11th, and they will also meet in the final game of the regular wow. season on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So who knows, maybe that game could uh, have league title ramifications. Meanwhile though, Geneva's gonna have to work on their free throws, I'll <laughs> tell you that much. As Pasolacqua will take it in as he adds to his point total, he now has 15. 
We're down to just 35 seconds. It kind of makes you wonder if Miners went to the old uh, hack-a-shack earlier in the game. And if, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, they could have maybe got back in this game instead of giving up some open threes, just put them on the line. I mean, what, what's their total from the one free throw? One for 12, man. Wow. One How for many times do you see a team? Well, first of all, you never see a team go one for 12 from the line, sure. but they're up double figures. Yeah, on the road, one for 12 from the free throw line. They're up double figures. That's a credit to what they've done on the offensive glass and what they've done from beyond the arc. Make that it's one unbelievable. for 13. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They should step back and shoot from the three-point line. I think Sims got two or three threes, but he can't make a free throw. And we're going to have a foul on the other end, meanwhile, as Ruddy goes up with the left hand. Just 24.8 remaining, an 11-point lead for Geneva. One for 13. And the crazy part? No, I was going to say, I can't remember if Dolga shot it first or Duduro shot him first, but it, was, it may have been... No, I guess, no, he had, they, missed, they missed four before they finally hit one. I was going to say, was it the first one of the, that they shot? But it was actually, they had missed their first four. The only made free throw <laughs> came from Trevor Duduro. He should get a prize Congratulations. or something Congratulations. <laughs> and Miners hasn't exactly lit up from the free throw line either. No, they, they've, they've left some points there also, so neither team uh, put on a free throw exhibition here tonight. Minders now, they were three of nine, now five of 11. We at least, to get, at least start to get into the range of respectability. Yeah. <laughs> and approach 50%. That's right. Well, I think Minders might just call the dogs off right yep. now. It's a nine point game, three possession game, but a decisive win on the road for the Geneva Panthers. They move to 4 and 0, 3 and 0 in the Finger Lakes East. And as we said, maybe. Now Miners can just focus on what this team is going to be about and this season is going to be about as they see their 30-game home court winning streak here at Baker Gym come to an end. Yeah, Miners are going to have to get back to work and uh, make some improvements. And they got a good team. They're going to be there. I still think they got a chance for the league title, even you know, we'll see how all this plays out. But uh, they need to make some improvements, which I think they'll do, and uh, I think they're going to be there in the end. Blue Devils now 1-2. and two. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back and uh, we'll talk to the victors from Geneva. Again, a big debut for Junior Sims, the DeSales transfer. And we'll be back to talk about it after this. Again, final score 59-50 here on Finger Lakes 1.tv. Attention Finger Lakes residents. Have you been injured and deserve compensation? Call Madey, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. Your case deserves personal attention. At Madey, Maris, and Ricky, they know you by name, not just a number on a folder. Call the Finger Lakes Personal Injury Hotline at 315-568-0911. That's 315-568-0911. Madey, Maris, and Ricky, your hometown personal injury attorneys. The most valuable things are always passed down from generation to generation. It's true for your family, and it's true for our bank. For more than 140 years at Generations Bank, we've greeted you by name, planned with you for the future, and stood by you when you needed a hand. It's what we do, and what we'll continue to do for generations into the future. We might look different now, but in the important ways, we're exactly like we've always been. Stop in your local branch, or go to mygenbank.com. www.fingerlakes1.com Is this the microphone here? Well, we put this in. Somebody can wear these if they want. Oh. And back on FingerLakes1.tv after Geneva's very impressive 59-50 win over the Minders Blue Devils, ending Minders' 30-game home court winning streak. And I'm joined now by a pair of Geneva Panthers, Junior Sims, two away from me on my left, and then uh, also here Shane Sweeney 
And uh, first of all, guys, congratulations. Let's get a microphone over uh, for you guys. Uh, Shane, first of all, a as the senior, uh, I know you've had some some games come down to the wire with this uh, with this Minders team in the past, and I, I know this is one you wanted. You could tell from the outset that you guys brought the intensity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a great this is a great basketball team. I mean, we always compete when we're on the floor together, and I mean, to get a win against such a quality team, it's it's just great. It's a great win. Uh, it seemed like you really had the intensity on the defensive end right from the beginning. Yeah, that's what you got to do. I mean, we we all preach great defense, hardcore defense, and I mean, we I feel I feel like we accomplished that tonight. How, uh, how much did it mean to have the, this guy to your left uh, join you guys? I, I know uh, Junior coming over from DeSales High School, you've played with him over the summer some, and uh, I'm sure you know what he's capable of, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely. He's a monster in the paint, and, I mean, it's great to have him over here. Well, let's ask it. What, what Junior, I mean, congratulations, 18 points. You were doing it inside, offensive rebounds. You hit some threes as well. Uh, what was it like being back out there? It was great. I just wanted to play my game. I know I messed up and stuff, but like, I'm glad to be back. It, it seemed like you played like a guy who had, who had been waiting and was anxious to get back on the court. Was it hard to kind of hold back, and, uh, or, or did you just kind of let the game come to you? Yeah, I just had to wait and let, watch my teammates, learn from my mistakes, and just play ball. When did you find out you were going to be able to play in this game? Uh, last week, uh, Friday. And I, I worked very hard to get back on the team. What, was, what has it been like going through the transition, moving from DeSales? And, of course, you know you transferred away from there before they closed, but a, a lot of changes. But, I mean, there has to be some excitement as well because you've got onto a pretty good Geneva team. I know you came from a sectional championship team at DeSales, but I mean, what's it like to play with these guys at Geneva? It's a great experience. More harder teams, and, like, we just, like, like I don't even know. It's just, I just like playing with this guy right here to my right. <laughs> Shane, as you look ahead now, I mean, you're four games in, you're 4-0, there's a long way to go, but what can a win like this over a great program like Minders do going forward? No, it gives you great confidence. I mean, you got we got some tough league opponents coming up, and a win like this, I mean, it just gives us more confidence going towards the season, deeper into the season. Well, congratulations, guys. Uh, enjoy this win, and then uh, I know you got another one coming up on Friday night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ed, we'll bring, uh, we'll bring Matt back on here. Um. Jim, you want to keep it here, or we want to take one more break? We'll just. All right, we're gonna we'll, we'll wrap things up, and uh, do we get points totaled up or no? Uh, not all. Okay, of them. all right. Well, we know. Uh, where but you got my book? I don't know what I did. Yeah, with we're kind of <laughs> operating on the fly here, but uh, 18 points uh, from Sims to lead the way. Uh, Donnie, who had 14 as well, as we talked about. Uh, Dolgas off the bench was really good. He finished with 11. I know Sweeney was kind of held in check. He finished with seven, but. Uh, you can tell talk with him. I mean, just sure. What a what a what a great character guy he is with what he's done on the football field and now uh, at the heart of this basketball team and uh, really a statement win for Geneva tonight. Yeah, it really was. You know, they uh, you know we talked about it. They they uh, had some tough losses in the last couple of years and tonight they you know they they pretty much dominated this game. You know, we talked about all night. They you know they could have won by 20 tonight if they knocked down some free throws <laughs> and, uh, and and things like that. But uh, great win for Geneva. I think it really showed their their balance and adding Sims to what was you know they got Sims and and uh, Johnson inside, super athletic. They really look for each other. You know, Sweeney struggled a little bit with a shot, but he he never put his head down. He got in the lane. He found Donahue a few times. And uh, you know they're a very well balanced team. And uh, you know they're going to be up in the top for the league this year. And I look for them to uh, you know get a high seed for sectionals and you know maybe make a run in the Class A section this year. Yeah, they'll have a chance to do that, and as we said with Minders, uh, maybe a chance now to kind of regroup and focus on what this team is going to develop into. Coach Fields is a guy who's been around and uh, back to the drawing board, and, and I think there's uh, definitely a few more W's to come Minders' way before oh, the year's over. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, Minders is going to be one of the top two or three teams in the league this year. Um, you know, they got some games coming up where they can work on a few things, and uh, really, they, they just need to find themselves. Uh, you know, they lost Dylan Verke last year, who was a Fat Five player, a four-year starter, and uh, they, they need to, offensively, they're just out of sync. They hit, you know, maybe some guys taking some shots that not necessarily Coach Fields wants them to, but, uh, you know, they, they got the tail. They got, their, you know, they got some big guys inside. They got good guards, and, uh, you know, I look for them to improve throughout the year, and uh, like we talked about, find their own identity and uh, get ready for to make another sectional title run this year. Well, again, uh, thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks very much to Jim Sinekropi, our producer and director, and also host of the Matt Verke Show at <laughs> halftime, uh, and then also Jeremy Hunt on camera. We'll be back next Tuesday, Naples and South Seneca, Finger Lakes West, as my boys from Naples try and keep their great start to their 
young season going. So we look forward to that. So, Matt, pleasure working with you. Great job. And uh, we look forward to bringing a number of these contests your way throughout the winter. Again, the final score, 59-50. The Geneva Panthers over the Miners Blue Devils, ending their 30-game home court winning streak, and the Panthers move to 4-0. Good night, everyone, from Seneca Falls. Good night.